Hello, I'm Tom Kastner, co-founder of Flash PCB, an AI-powered PCB assembly service. And today, I'd like to discuss power planes or filled zones in KiCad with you. So let's switch over to the board and have a quick look at what we're working on. So here's the schematic for the board itself. It's a little 555 timer, a FET and some LEDs, and then a micro USB connector for power. And let's switch over to the board itself. Here's the board. So why would you want to have um, filled zones or ground planes and power planes on a, on a board like this? So this board is a simple two-layer board, so we don't get quite get all the effects that we would on a normal four-layer or higher-layer count board. But generally, there are a few appreciable reasons for doing power planes or filled zones. The first is more carrying capacity. So in this case, you know, we have some LEDs up here. This is probably going to be our highest power consumption. Um, and we want to get a lot of, well, not a lot in this case, but some current from this end of the board up to this end of the board. And we can do that with a trace, or we can do that with a plane. And when we use a plane, we essentially get the widest trace possible on the board itself. Second reason is more better EMC performance. So basically, um, we're going to have a shorter return path from ground. So we have a ground here, back to the connector itself to dissipate any kind of noise that we get or in the system itself. So the shorter a return path, the better off we're going to be in terms of EMC performance. The other thing that it does, it also helps decouple the different circuits. So in this case, we have a separate circuit for our LEDs, and we have a separate circuit for our 555 timers. If the LEDs are very noisy, for instance, they're clicking on and off very, very fast, we might see a ripple coming down our one of either our five volt line or our ground uh, connection into the 55 timer, 555 timer circuit and causing issues here. Now this is a very robust circuit, so it's probably not gonna have a problem. And this is a fairly simple circuit here, but this is definitely the case when we have, for instance, motor drivers or anything that's gonna be really produce a lot of RF noise on the board itself. The third reason is better heat dissipation. And nothing on this board gets too hot, but a lot of times in a QFN package, you'll see a big pad in the middle of the package itself that's used to dissipate the heat from the package into one of the planes itself. So when you have a QFN package with a, a large pad in the middle that dissipates a lot of heat, we want that to go into a large plane as opposed to going to the little tiny traces to get carried away. And finally, when you're in the CAD program itself, it's just easier to route. So not having to worry about running a five volt trace everywhere or a ground trace everywhere, just makes life easier when you're doing your initial layout in here. So let's start adding a, the ground plane and power plane in KiCad here. So my first consideration in a two layer board is, is the top gonna be ground or power? So having had a quick look at this board, I see a lot of connections down here for ground which makes me think that it's better to have the top layer be ground. So let's add that. To add a ground plane, all you have to do is come over here to this add a filled zone. When I add a filled zone, I like to use a much larger grid size. It just makes it easier to get a rectangle going. So we can actually take a really small one. There we go. And I want to add this on the top. So click, and we're going to get our first little a uh, dialog box up here, and I'm gonna select the net that I would like to be part of. Click OK. And I'll lay out my whole zone here. And then I'll press B to fill the zone. And you'll see that we've already filled the ground zone, the ground plane here, and so all of our ground connections are made. Next, we'll add the five volt plane to the back of the board. So I'll go back to the add filled zone. I'm going to take the bottom of the board and I'm going to repeat the same here, except I'll select five volts in this case. And I'll fill the zone again. And we'll see that now in some instances here, I've already pre-run these traces knowing that I'm going to have a five volt uh, plane on the back side of the board. So those are already run, but there's a few that aren't yet. So let's go ahead and run those. So I've got my trace tool. And I'm gonna go back down to my much 
it's more on the side, so I'll escape. Route this track down here. Press B to go on the back side of the board. Okay. And then hit escape. And I'll refill the zones. And you can see that we've cleared the a little area on the 5 volt here on the ground plan at the top. Now, by default, KiCad fills the zones all the way to the edge of the board. This is not good for manufacturing. So if we run, say we have an end mill running across doing this edge here, we can actually create a short because we have copper up to the very edge of the top and the bottom. It might, we might end up actually having a short between the two layers um, as a little um, piece of copper that's being end milled away, maybe bridges the connection there. Um, so one of the things I like to do is add some clearance. So I'll go to the board settings, constraints, copper edge clearance, and I'm gonna typically add a millimeter and we'll refill these zones. And with that, we filled the zones. Now, one of the things I've noticed as I changed my clearance is that I've lost the net connection, so I can go ahead and add those back in again. And now we've fully completed the board. This is ready for manufacturing. I look forward to seeing your KiCad designs uh, on the, through the Flash PCB service. Uh, please like and subscribe. There'll be a link in the description um, to a blog post covering filled zones in KiCad, as well as a link in the description to sign up for our newsletter so you can see the latest features that we have at Flash PCB.